4 o'clock news hour here. So here we go. Chris Hegstrom, I am the Director of Media Relations for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. I want to take a moment to welcome a couple people here. Obviously, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Mike Zulo standing behind. And then sitting down is Bob Corbin, who is the former county attorney, former board of supervisor, former attorney general for the state of Arizona, and past president of the NRA. Thank you for being here, Bob. And helping Joe. And helping Joe, right? Today, Sheriff Arpaio and uh, Mike Zulo are going to share information to you on a case that they've been working since August of 2011. Since the beginning of this investigation, you, the media, have continued to mischaracterize the nature of this investigation. So you're going to hear this more than once today, but this investigation was never about where President Obama was born. This is about a document that was presented to the general public through the White House and purported to be a factual document. Today you're going to hear lots of information uh, that some of you are going to understand and are going to be able to tell the true story. In fact, Please know that this is a very technical, but the evidence is clear if you'll pay attention. Please note you're going to hear about two separate experts. These experts are uh, two separate continents with no knowledge of each other, and they draw similar conclusions. Again, that said, I know some of you are going to get to this story and are going to tell the story the way it was. However, there's going to be others here today who will continue to malign this sheriff and Mike Zulo in order to show that you haven't been wrong for many years while covering this story. All I ask is that you are respectful during the presentation of the information. Here's Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, back, thank you for showing up. Back in uh, 2011, about 250 members of the surprise tea party came to me and asked me to investigate President Obama's birth certificate since they believe evidence showed that the certificate was a fraud. I agreed to look into the matter and with Chief Investigator Mike Zullo, we initiated, initiated an investigation. At this time, and to this day, I stated that I did not care where the president was born. It had nothing to do with that. But we were going to investigate a possible government forge document. Hope you get that straight. I've been saying that from day one since 2011. Today you will be presented with an in-depth executive summary of our investigation into the matter which we now have concluded to be a fraudulently created document which has been represented as an official copy of the original birth certificate of President Obama. We and anyone else who dared to question the document have been maligned, falsely labeled, grossly criticized in the bulk of the media on certain internet sources for years. Today, we're going to set the record straight. I b believe you will be shocked by what you hear and see today. Also, the implications will be profound. All we have ever wanted, ever wanted was the truth in this matter. With the great hope that the document was indeed a valid representation of the original document. Think of that. We were trying to clear the president. It didn't work out that way. We had to follow the evidence. 
we let the evidence determine the evidence determine the direction of the investigation that's what we always do on any investigation you get the evidence this one was handled no differently than no matter what the investigation is about so now the important pro uh, part is to present the pertinent details and the executive summary of our analysis. I'm going to turn this over to Mike Zullo, who dedicated five years of his life, five years of his life taking this mission on, which I asked him to do five years ago. Mike, come on up and give your thoughts. Thank you, Sheriff. I, I want to start by trying to give everyone here, including the media that's been viciously against us from the beginning, an understanding of how I tried to conduct this investigation. I believe in 2012 we did two press conferences. In those press conferences, I had made it clear that Sheriff Arpaio's original mandate to me was, Mike, take a look at this, clear this document, because I want to be the guy that clears this document and moves this country forward. This is no good. That was the mandate. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Like the sheriff just told you, when you conduct criminal investigations, you have to let the evidence lead you. You never lead the evidence. And in doing this, my motive was to clear the document. Because to be quite honest with you, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe this was possible. I didn't think this would ever happen in this nation. I didn't believe it. Back in 2012, I told you about Reed Hayes, a document examiner. Let me tell you about Reed Hayes, a man with 40 years, since 1974, 40 plus years of experience in examining forensic document, handwriting, a man who's well respected in his expertise, a court recognized expert a document examiner. He is the man you go to when somebody gives you a bad check with a bad signature. This is the guy you run to. Law firms use him all the time. He's been maligned. And let me tell you something about Mr. Hayes. When I contacted Mr. Hayes, Mr. Hayes told me right, about, right off the bat, I'm, a, I'm an Obama supporter. I, I voted for him twice goes, and I will never do anything to hurt the President of the United States. What I had said to him was, Reed, I am not asking you to hurt the President of the United States. I'm asking you to take a look at this document and clear it and tell me there's nothing wrong with it. Would you at least do that? And he took a look at it. And when he called me back, he told me, Mike, I can't clear this. There's something wrong with it. And I asked him, I said, Reed, would you continue? I said, I know your position, but would you continue? And his answer to me was, this is what I do. I'll look at it. I'll do it. That's a man of integrity, respecting what his ability is to get to the truth. Because for Sheriff Apayo and myself, this was never about Barack Obama. This is about a document. You take that document and you remove the name Barack Hussein Obama and put your name on there. If it was your document and it was brought to us, we would do the same thing with this document. This document was being investigated from the only way that I ever knew how to do it. You look to prove the guilty party innocent, the one you suspect. If you can prove him innocent, you don't put the wrong guy in jail. But when you try to prove him innocent and the evidence starts to stack up, now you change because the guilt is coming to the top. That's the way this was done. Jerry Corsi and WND, 
I grilled Jerry Corsi for 16 hours. This is no joke. I didn't believe anything he was showing me until he showed me one document. Everybody thinks it's the Obama document. When I had said that in the past, it wasn't. Jerry Corsi and WND, they were onto something. I'm not so sure they knew it was going to go the way it's going now, but they were onto something. And what we're going to show you today is information that you have never seen before. It was information that was developed by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in assistance with actually the gentleman who makes my videos, Mr. Mark Galar. Mark Galar has a unique ability when it comes to digital software and, and this whole video thing that he does. And Mark Galar and I were on a Skype call. Had to be felt like years. We, we would go back and forth for years. And at one point, I did alert Mr. Galar to what I was suspecting, and we began to work at it together. What I'm going to do right now is I am going to let the video play in its entirety. Then I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to clear some things up. And then I'm going to let it play one more time, and I'm going to stop it periodically and address some things. I really want you to sit back and have an open mind, because what you're going to see is we utilized forensic document examiners Reed Hayden Hawaii and a company named Forlab in Italy. And I have two different disciplines. I have Reed Hayes, a document examiner, Forlabs, forensic digital technicians. Forlabs trains law enforcement throughout Europe. Forlabs specialty is child pornography cases. Forlabs, everybody in that building is a PhD with math equations that, my God, I've never seen in my life. These guys know their stuff. And I'm going to tell you what I respect about both of them. Both Reed Hayes and Marco at Four Labs stayed true to their discipline. One of the tests you do when you have an expert, you want to make sure your expert isn't trying to run you for the money. If I can push the expert, that's not a guy I want. These men could not be pushed. This is their findings, this is how they see it, and this is how they're calling it. So I'm going to run this video for you, and I want you to understand this has nothing to do with anything we ever did before. It doesn't negate what we did before, and I'll explain that. It is new, and it's profound, and it is, it's quite disturbing. So let me play the video for you now, and then we'll move on. two long-form birth certificates from the state of Hawaii. According to the dates on the certificates, these births took place in Honolulu during the month of August in 1961, just 16 days apart. The birth certificate on the left belongs to Barack Obama. The birth certificate on the right belongs to Johanna Ani. After five years of intense investigation, which included consultation with one of America's most respected forensic document examiners and a team of European media forensic experts, the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office has reached a conclusion utilizing forensic techniques both old and new. It is the opinion of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office that the birth certificate on your right belonging to Johanna Ani was in fact used as a source document in the digital creation of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Nine points of forgery in which words, letters, and hand-placed date stamps have been digitally copied from the Ani long-form birth certificate and pasted onto Obama's long-form birth certificate. We'll look at the first five points of forgery together since they were brought over from the Ani document in one group.
Now let's drop out the on need document as a background and view that again. Now let's look at the date stamps in box 20 and 22. In this case, the stamps were brought over one at a time. But as we do this experiment, ask yourself, what are the odds that two stamps in two separate boxes, stamped by hand 16 days apart, would have the exact same angle in box 20 and the exact same angle in box 22? First, we'll look at the left stamp. Now the right stamp. It should be pointed out that these stamps were looked at by two separate document examiners who specialize in two separate forensic disciplines and who reside on two different continents. Both agree that these angles are identical on both the Obama document and the Agni document. Let's watch that again without all of the background clutter. It should be noted that Susan and Gretchen Nordyke were born five minutes from each other and have consecutive serial numbers. Therefore, their date stamps ostensibly would have been put on back to back. But as you can see, looking at the leftmost date stamps underlined in red and looking at the rightmost date stamps underlined in blue, there is no similarity in terms of the angle of the date stamps. How ironic that Barack Obama's birth certificate and Johanna Ani's birth certificate, which were stamped 16 days apart, are identical in angle according to two separate disciplines within the world of forensic document examination, and yet the Nordyke twins, born five minutes from each other, stamped back to back, don't show any similarity in angles. We've made a number of references to angles so far. The reason for that is if you're going to take an item off of one document and place it onto another, the angle is going to remain the same unless you intentionally alter it after you place it on the second document. Watch. When you have two separate documents with two hand-placed date stamps at the same angles, it should be obvious that a forgery has taken place. For the next example, we'll need to zoom in a little bit. Now we are going to focus on boxes 6D and 6E within the Obama PDF. Both X's were taken directly from box 6D in the ANI long-form birth certificate. In fact, not only was the X pulled over, but the box itself was pulled over and various parts of the line on top of the X were also pulled over according to forensic document experts.
Next, we'll drop the ID document out of the picture, except for the items that were used to create the Obama birth certificate. Now I know when you see that the first time, kind of looking at it, trying to figure out, okay, what is really, what does all this really mean? The date stamps that are at the lower angle of the document. Let me try to start this again if I could freeze it. You are looking at two long form birth. You're going to see the date stamps that are in the lower corners of both documents. Now, yes, they have a, a different day date but the month and year is correct. That document has been in Maricopa County Sheriff's Office possession since the end of 2011. Actually, I took it from Jerry Corsi. Um, those stamps on those lower left and right corners, we had made a transparency after we got the document and we laid those stamps one on top of the other. They were close, but not an exact match. And in what we do, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. This needed to be an exact match, and it wasn't. And we had looked at this and looked at this on and off for a couple years. In the meantime, there are operatives, paid operatives, that do anything they can to undermine this investigation and anybody that comes in favor of this investigation started throwing out this notion that a 7655 Xerox copier was the forger. Well, newsflash for them, it's not. The 7655, while it does have an ability to replicate some anomalies, it does not do it as presented in the Obama document. We purchased a 7655 Xerox copier it took us over a year and a half to find someone who still had the correct software from 2011 to install in the machine. Four labs determined what are called quantization settings in computers, mathematical algorithms. They could get very close to that 2011 software, but again, it wasn't exact. We needed to find the software. We located the software. We loaded the software in the machine. We initiated scanning campaigns, 70, 80 different, different ways to run the document. In every one of those campaigns, we could not exactly replicate the number of layers, the number of links, and the way information comes over. But these findings that I'm presenting you today have something different in every, in, than every other circumstance. My goal at that point was we needed to get away from this 7655 copier and these digital forensics problems, these computer generated issues, and I needed to look at this document completely different. In doing that, I contacted Mark Galar again, and I asked Mark if he would do me a favor. I, I said, Mark, would you please make me an overlay video so I can t show this to the sheriff? I, I know there's something here, I'm just not finding it. Mark agrees to make the video, and as Mark is doing the video, he contacts me and he goes, I figured it out. Now, I want you to understand something. I have to stay as neutral in this as possible. I did not want to be the guy that ever figured anything out. I wanted to be the clearinghouse, because what I was going to do was send whatever we found across the globe to Hawaii and Italy 
and have independent forensics examiners from two different disciplines either conclude or completely disagree with each other. That was my methodology. That's why I'm telling you the evidence took us, we didn't take the evidence. When Mark calls me, what he realized was the ANI original certificate that was issued in 1995 by the state of Hawaii had been put on a copier at the Department of Health in Hawaii and it was a little offset by like a degree and a half. And when Mark made the adjustment, those date stamps lined up perfectly. So we stopped and I sent it to Italy and I sent it to Hawaii and I waited. And Italy did all kinds of mathematical formulas and that's all going to be in their report that's going to get turned over somewhere else. And they called me up and they told me that those stamps match exactly. And in talking with, with Marco, I asked him, I said, Marco, look, I got I to gotta talk to you now, not like a scientist. I talk to you like an investigator. In my mind, you can't have the same corresponding date stamp and the same corresponding box at the same corresponding angles on two separate documents that if we believe the Obama certificate is real, they're 16 days apart in creation. And if we don't believe the Obama certificate is real, I have a 54-year-old copy of an original document that was created 16 years ago. I don't think you can do that. And Marco told me that he didn't think you could either because he tried and he was unable to. Waited for Reed Hayes. Reed Hayes contacts me and he tells me, this is, this you can't do, this is impossible. Reed Hayes, who is an educator in his field, told me he tells all his students, you will never be able to replicate something exactly by human hand. If it's replicated exactly, there's going to be some other kind of intervention. It's not by human hand. So now I have two document examiners telling me the same thing. Italy has a scientific protocol. They can only gauge probability by the amount of source documents that are provided to them. We only had nine real birth certificates. I mean, you, you just can't go out in the street and get Hawaii birth certificates. So they were hindered by nine. Examining those date stamps, and when I tell you about the other issues in the document, they concluded that it is a thousand times more probable that the document is inauthentic. They also concluded that if they had a greater sampling, that number would be higher because they have concluded that that document, it is highly improbable, next to impossible, that you will find another document with every anomaly we just showed you. And I'm going to read you some of their quotes in a minute. Reed Hayes, on the other hand, Reed Hayes said, that's forgery, because that's impossible. I called Mark Galar back. I go, Mark, now that we got the date stamps, we need to start looking at the document. We're both looking at the machine at the same time. He's in Texas, I'm here. And he starts to line up the 6-1 that's on the top by the serial number of the birth certificate. And as he does that, all of a sudden, the word Oahu in the center of the page lines up. So I was like, wow, that's strange. I said, Mark, do me a favor. I want you to please go down this document and start matching up every letter and every word because I, I think it's going to unlock. And that's what he does. And he calls me back and he had found those matches that you've seen from the ANI certificate matched exactly to the Obama certificate. It's called textural juxtaposition. In other words, they are in the same relationship to each other no matter where you put them. In other words, somebody took that little X in that corner box. When I play this video again, you're going to watch it differently now. Use that as a point of reference and picked up three or four other words and moved them over. Sent that to Reed Hayes. Sent that to Italy. Italy concludes, yeah, you know what? You can go to a document. You might find a, a word that might line up like that. Improbable that you're going to find the number of words that line up like this. Reed Hayes. Reed Hayes is different. Reed Hayes is an old school document examiner. He goes, that's impossible. 
That, that can't happen. He goes, but Mike, I found something else. Reed Hayes discovered the little X's in two other boxes were identical to an X in the Ani certificate. Not only was the X identical, but the X, the box, and the word above were all taken at once because you couldn't just take the X. Reed Hayes, to, to me personally, said, Mike, that's like you getting a fingerprint. He said, that's impossible. Reed Hayes also focused on the signature of Stanley Ann Dunham in the Obama certificate. Reed Hayes doesn't believe that's an original signature. He believes it's been piecemeal together. And I'm going to do this. You know, I was going to read a lot of stuff to you, but I'd rather you see the video. I want to read to you Reed Hayes's conclusion this time. Reed Hayes, 40 years, a true professional. The man's a professional. The evidence noted herein is clear and convincing proof that the Obama certificate of live birth posted on whitehouse.gov on April 27, 2011 is a fraudulently manufactured document. Evidence indicates that this certificate of live birth of Johanna Ani is one source utilized in the construction of the certificate of live birth. Read Hayes' own words, the parentheses, nail in the coffin, close parentheses, that provides the certificate of live birth is inauthentic, is the exact lineup of numerous entries on both the certificate of live birth and the ANI certificate. That's a fraudulent document. You don't get a clearer definition than a fraudulent document. This has nothing to do with a 7655 copier. That copier is irrelevant to our information. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in 2012, twice, did not divulge to you everything we were working on, but I did give you a hint. I told you I went to Sheriff Arpaio and I said, Sheriff, there's another way at this thing. There's something wrong here. This information that we have just shared with you is evidence. We are in possession of the certificate. Now going back to Hawaii, and I want to clear something up because I said it in 2012 and I'm going to say it again. This office, the county, was going to be reimbursed for the expenses of Deputy Brian Makowitz to the tune of $9,600, I believe. We presented a check. Politics got involved and trying to shame this sheriff decided not to take our check. This sheriff didn't spend the money. We were prepared to reimburse the general fund for whatever the expense was, and we had a check in hand. So I really want that corrected on the record. This sheriff held true to his word. I, th so true, bear me out. I couldn't get a paper clip out of this office. I was lucky I got two letters on stationery because I had to make him sign them. But that was it. So he was true to his word. No matter how many times I say that in the media, they try to hang that on him. That was politics. We were prepared to pay it, and they refused to take our money. That's on the county. That's not on us. In Hawaii, we went there for two purposes. Again, our intention was to clear the document. And I am going to be really candid with you. I am not a Democrat. I am a Republican. I'm a conservative. I'm everything a lot of people hate. I would have loved to have been the guy to clear this document and take this weight off of the president, off of the country, and off of the sheriff. I could not do that. And you're faced with a dilemma because about half the country is going to hate you. The other half might think you're a hero, but you know what? That doesn't matter because the half that hates you hates you hard. But you have to be true to your discipline. You have to be true to who you are. This is about the truth. And there were a couple times I went to the sheriff and I said, you know, sheriff, we may find out that we're wrong on this, 
First thing out of his mouth, well, we're all at the press conference, we're going to tell the world we were wrong. You're right, we are. And there were a couple of times I started to question this. I don't question it anymore. The only time I question it is as I'm writing up report after report, I still question, did this happen? Did this really happen here? When we were in Hawaii, Detective Makowitz and I, for the purpose of trying to clarify the issue, we did go to the Department of Health in Hawaii. Yes, they did call the police on us. Yes, they didn't want to talk to us, but we did sit down. And we sat down with Jill Nagamini, an assistant, uh, a deputy attorney general for the state of Hawaii. And I told this story once, but I'm going to tell it to you again because it's got great importance. In the dialogue that went back and forth, it was very clear to Detective Makowitz and I that this was a no-go topic for them. And in that dialogue, I proposed in the exchange to an attorney. I said to her, if I gave you a copy of my driver's license, because for some reason it needed to be displayed across the World Wide Web, and you took that driver's license and you made a photocopy of it, but you changed some stuff around and you put it on the web, have you displayed my driver's license? Now the proper answer is no, that's an altered document. Her answer to me was, but you still have a driver's license. That was alarming to me. That was alarming to me. The next follow-up from her was, does the public have a right to see your driver's license? which I responded, if I say I'm going to proffer it publicly, they most certainly do, and they most certainly do be assured that it's mine. Those set off alarm bells. Both Detective Mackowitz and I walked out, we're walking on the sidewalk, thanking God we didn't get thrown out with the cops because they were the biggest two cops I've ever seen in my life. And we both concurred, there's something wrong here. They're avoiding what we were asking, and what we were asking was this. We already knew that they had released this verification. This verification and other verifications like it are cleverly worded to give you the impression that the verification is verifying the image that you see up here. That is not the fact. They are verifying the information in whatever you show them. They are verifying that there is a birth record on file that has this information in it. Well, when you start to study the Hawaii statutes, you realize there are ways to amend a certificate that turns the real certificate into a sequestered record in another file, and the amended information now becomes the original birth document. And that could happen 54, 6,400 years later. So what they're saying to us is, we're not validating that image. We're just validating some of the stuff in it. Legally, truthful answer, but also misleading. Because you have no way to determine, was this an amended certificate? I want to jump real clear, quick to the birth announcements that are in the paper. I contacted the, Microsoft, uh, the microfilm company that has them. I have them in microfilm. There is an oddity. I will, I will grant you this. There is an oddity. In that section of the paper, those birth records from one newspaper to another are completely identical in positioning. They're identical. And in the other sections of the paper, they're not. That, that honestly is, is suspicious to me. It, it truly is. But the other thing is there's been no paper ever surface. No hard copy Arizona paper from the time period has ever surfaced. We can only go by the, the best evidence we have, and those, those look good. I went, when I was in Washington four times, I went to the Library of Congress, checked those out. They're in there, but here's the problem with those. They don't tell you anything. Hawaii law says that the Department of Health in Hawaii must create a birth certificate merely on the representation from anyone that a birth has taken place. It doesn't tell you anything. Somebody just reported it. So let's, let's give that benefit of the doubt. Let's say that's true. Now you run into Kapolani Medical Center. <clears throat> Kapolani Medical Center we visited. I would have rather been thrown out by the cops than at Kapolani Medical Center because they told us to get out. They told us they're not going to 
deal with this. This is nothing that they have to do. We're a private organization, and we have no authority there, and we're not going to help you. Okay. We've gone to two places that could have cleared this issue up. I tried. Nobody would cooperate. We come back. We're still sitting here now with this document. We interviewed Johanna Ani twice. In both those interviews, I'm not going to go into the details of those, but I'm going to let you understand that Johanna Ani maintains that her birth certificate was in her possession since 1995 in her locked file cabinet, and the only time she took it out was at a request of a friend to show it to Jerry Corsi. Jerry Corsi does confirm he took possession of her document, but it was about 10 days after the release of the Obama certificate. Now, obviously, I'm not in Hawaii, and I can't pursue this any further. So, Johanna Ani is not a suspect. There's another woman, Mickey Booth, has been labeled a suspect. She was the friend. She's not a suspect. These people that go out and say these things should really watch what they're saying. Those people are not suspects. However, Johanna Ani is still an investigative lead as far as we are concerned because I can't validate the rest of the story. But we're in possession of the document that is a source document as far as this is concerned. I am going to play that video one more time. I think I'm just going to play it one more time in its entirety. Then I'm just going to show you the conclusion in our video, and I'm going to turn this back over to Sheriff Arpaio. But what you're seeing here is the information is taken, the stamps were taken, the X's were taken, and I've got two different forensic examiners concurring that it's fake. It's a fabrication. This carries federal penalties. And understand one other thing. The state of Hawaii has done everything they can to stay away from validating that image. Oh, let me back up. I went and spoke with Secretary of State Bennett back when the ballot challenge was going on. And if I remember right, he was in that challenge before we even got involved. We, we had nothing to do with this. And I, I do believe he was trying to do the right thing. But he sent a number of letters back and forth, and they kept stonewalling him. And then he got a phone call. And according to him, from Hawaii, he was told how to reword his request. Well, what that does is that takes the request and puts it in the category of a validation of a birth event in lieu of issuing a certificate, which made it easier for them to validate it. And when you read these validations, you got to read through them. There's another validation out there. I think it was in a Mississippi court case where in the validation, it, it even puts the White House website address in it. But you got to read what it says. They're not validating the image. They're validating the information. And we have no idea how that information got there. Simple to understand the dilemma because the director of health previously says she saw the record in a bound volume sitting where it should be on a shelf. The incoming governor can't find it. And they look for it. And now they can't find it in this bound volume. Now they find it in the state archives, half typed, half written. Well, which was it? Was it in the bound volume? Or is it sitting in a pile of papers? And then all of a sudden, it mysteriously makes its way back to a bound volume. We have no idea what's on that birth certificate. We have no idea if there was a birth certificate. We have no idea if somebody just wrote something down and through some nice legal maneuvering created a birth event. We, we don't know. We just simply don't know. We don't know where Mr. Obama was born, nor that was not something we're here to, to find out. We don't know that. We don't know if he's a natural born citizen or not. I don't think the country knows what the definition of that is anymore. That wasn't anything that we were pursuing. We're pursuing the document. So let me play this one more time for you because it's getting late. I want to show you this evidence all over again, and I really want you to sit back now, think about what I just sh shared with you, and see how this comes. From the state of Hawaii, according to the dates on the certificates, these births took place in Honolulu during the month of August in 1961, just 16 days apart. The birth certificate on the left belongs to Barack Obama. The birth certificate on the right belongs to Johanna Ani. 
after five years of intense investigation which included consultation with one of america's most respected forensic document examiners and a team of european media forensic experts the maricopa county sheriff's office has reached a conclusion utilizing forensic techniques both old and new it is the opinion of the maricopa county sheriff's office that the birth certificate on your right belonging to johanna ani was in fact used as a source document in the digital creation of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Nine points of forgery in which words, letters, and hand-placed date stamps had been digitally copied from Yanni long-form birth certificate and pasted onto Obama's long-form birth certificate. We'll look at the first five points of forgery together since they were brought over from the Yanni document in one group. I really want that to sink in. These were taken as one group. That's why relationally they are proportionate to each other. That's a key factor here. Now let's drop out the Ani document as a background and view that again. Now let's look at the date stamps in box 20 and 22. In this case, the stamps were brought over one at a time. But as we do this experiment, ask yourself, what are the odds that two stamps in two separate boxes, stamped by hand 16 days apart, would have the exact same angle in box 20 and the exact same angle in box 22? First, we'll look at the left stamp. <coughs> now the right stamp. It should be pointed out that these stamps were looked at by two separate document examiners who specialize in two separate forensic disciplines and who reside on two different continents. Both agree that these angles are identical on both the Obama document and the Ani document. Let's watch that again without all of the background clutter. It should be noted that Susan and Gretchen Nordyke were born five minutes from each other and have consecutive serial numbers. Therefore, their date stamps ostensibly would have been put on back to back. But as you can see, looking at the leftmost date stamps underlined in red and looking at the rightmost date stamps underlined in blue, there is no similarity in terms of the angle of the date stamps. How ironic that Barack Obama's birth certificate and Johanna Ani's birth certificate, which were stamped 16 days apart, are identical in angle <coughs> according to two separate disciplines within the world of forensic document examination. And yet the Nordyke twins, born five minutes from each other, stamped back to back, don't show any similarity in angles. We've made a number of references to angles so far. The reason for that is if you're going to take an item off of one document and place it onto another, the angle is going to remain the same unless you intentionally alter it after you place it on the second document. Watch.
Here's what we think we know about that. Whoever created this document wasn't thinking about angles or relationship to other things. That was the giveaway in the date stamps. What that is telling you is no matter where you place that date, its angle of trajectory will be identical. It will be the same unless you manually go in and change it. This was one of the things that began the free fall of this document collapsing upon itself. The position of words by using a small x as the point of reference and dragging them all over, this individual wasn't thinking about their relational positions. When you have two separate documents with two hand-placed date stamps at the same angles, it should be obvious that a forgery has taken place. For the next example, we'll need to zoom in a little bit now we are going to focus on boxes 6D and 6E within the Obama PDF. Both X's were taken directly from box 6D in the ANI long form birth certificate. In fact, not only was the X pulled over, but the box itself was pulled over and various parts of the line on top of the X were also pulled over according to forensic document experts. Those little X's, one of those X's was used twice. That's why they appear twice on the Obama certificate. It was the same X from only one box. And he, honey certificate. What the document examiner Reed Hayes noticed was the X was above the box, but the ink was bleeding into the word on top of it. That's why they had to take the box, the X, and the word, because she couldn't separate it. So obviously, this document was a template of some sort or a source. We're not entirely sure. I'm, I don't believe it was a template because of the positioning of these things. What they did on the date stamps, they didn't change the angles, but they just merely set them a little higher in the boxes. That was how they thought they were concealing it, but it doesn't change the angles. So I'm not sure what the, the document was. We know it's a source. We're safe bet on that. Next, we'll drop the ANI document out of the picture, except for the items that were used to create the Obama birth certificate. And that would have been the X utilized again. Again, this has nothing to do with any kind of computer forensics that we previously encountered. This has nothing to do with a 7655 copier. This has something to do with somebody that had a knowledge of cut and paste and Photoshop and God only knows what else. But unfortunately, those items, by forensic determination, two different disciplines, two different continents have come to the same conclusion. I guess that's a meeting of science. I, don't, I guess that's something you say. I, I don't even know. But it's like a meeting of two minds. They both concur. And they came to that conclusion with different scientific principles. 
we're pretty confident in these results. Now let's take a look at all the items that were taken from the items document and used to digitally create Barack Obama's long-term birth something this suspect if presented to you in your life? If you answer no, then ask yourself a second question. Don't the American people have a right to vet the documents that they are presented to the public officials? The following experts were consulted in preparation for today's report. Reed Hayes is a court-qualified handwriting and document examiner whose business is located in Honolulu. He has nearly 40 years of handwriting-related experience. Reed is a board member of the Scientific Association of Forensic Examiners and has co-authored five books. We also consulted Four Labs, a modern-day multimedia forensics team in Italy that specializes in analyzing data retrieved from multimedia files. We had two experts in two continents from two separate disciplines of forensics that came to one conclusion. Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate is not authentic. I want to point two things out before I turn this over to Sheriff Arpaio. Here and here. The presumption has to be that the state of Hawaii did not create the PDF file because they don't create PDF files. Legally, they can't create PDF files. It's also been said by the governor when these documents were purportedly released that these were handled in no different fashion than anything else. Yeah, okay. Those two stamps have to have been brought in either by a lift or by a stamping themselves, like a stamper. And we actually did go out for 25 bucks. We had a Kiko's make us Alvin Onaka stamp, no questions asked. We got a bait stamper. The safety paper background, this green background. During this investigation, I interviewed a number of <clears throat> different states, vital statistics directors, and their fraud investigators. We identified the safety paper used. I called the manufacturer. They confirmed for me that they are the manufacturer for Hawaii safety paper. To put this in contrast, the safety paper you see on the Barack Obama certificate could actually be replicated by what's called a swatch and replicate pattern. And we did that. We're not sure if that's what happened here or the safety paper was just scanned in and used. We're, we're not sure. However, in talking with Department of Health officials, two things came to light, and I'll use Arizona as, as an example. Arizona safety paper, uh, back in 2012, so maybe it's 10 cents instead of 7 cents a sheet, but Arizona safety paper has a plethora of security threads and, con and controls built into the document, including every sheet of paper is individually serialized. So that means that serial number of safety paper has to correspond to the registration number of that birth certificate. Arizona safety paper, I was told by their fraud investigator that if you can get that for seven cents a sheet, but on the black market, one sheet of Arizona safety paper costs $500 because of the way it's protected. 
comparably to Hawaii, we bought 500 sheets of this particular safety paper by the same manufacturer for 52 bucks, and then I really got mad when I went on eBay and found the same stuff for $11. You can buy this for 500 sheets for $11. I'm going to tell you this, and, and these professionals did agree with me. The safety paper problem, the lax birth certificate protocol that's uniformly followed throughout the country is severely lacking. This document, you could not have seen it in this fashion had the safety paper in Hawaii just been comparable to Arizona's. So something that we are going to ask for going forward, and we're going we're to pursue this politically, is we would like to see at least a standardization of security paper for birth documents that meet at least the standard of Arizona. If not, they can come up with something better. Because birth documents, to make a birth certificate, it is insanely easy. Trust me, we were fabricating them for five years. A printer, some paper, a template, Microsoft programs, a couple stamps. And let me tell you one other thing. The hard raised seal on the Obama certificate that the only person in the world said was Savannah Guthrie, who was ushered into a dark room to behold the certificate and felt the raised seal. There's a problem with that. That's okay, Bob, I won't hold it against you. There's a problem with that. Our analysis team has looked at that. One of the points of fabrication of the PDF file is a clipping mask that has been manually placed around the document. It's like a border. When you remove that mask, there are two pencil markings under the mask that it's been concealing. Also, that document has a very unique <clears throat> ghosting around the letters, which we were not able to replicate exactly in all our tests. The Savannah Guthrie document, not only does it <clears throat> display that unique ghosting, but it does not display the pencil marks that should have been there if it was an original hard copy document. Because the pencil marks were applied after the document was scanned in. Four Labs also concludes that this document started as a PDF file, was printed out, and then rescanned, which is an anti forensics technique. Additionally, the PDF file has no integrity to it because all the metadata has been erased. The metadata is the life history of building the document. It's missing. The document is utterly unreliable and the document is inauthentic. We also discovered, and I'm not going to get into this because we really have to go, AP distributed White House photos of the birth certificate purportedly that they took while they were there. Those are not AP photos. They are White House handout JPEG images created by the White House. That means the White House has the ability to create JPEGs. In those files, those JPEGs were altered by Photoshop. Why are you creating Photoshop enhanced JPEGs when you just have to take a picture of the document and put it up on the web? This document has been created. It's digitally been created. It is not real. The biggest question is why? That concludes where we are in this, and I'll bring this back to Sheriff Arpaio, let him tell you where we're going from here, and we'll go from there. Let me shut this down for you, Sheriff. You know, you know I listened to this five years ago. I said one thing, show us the microfish, show us the birth certificate, then we'll all go home. Where is it? To this day, very interesting question. I don't have the answer, but somebody should have it. So I plan on turning over this investigation this month to the federal government and Congress and hope that Congress, number one, will pass a law that presidents should be vented common sense. I think what's happened in the eight years will kind of prove what I'm trying to get 
should be passed. Maybe some members of Congress will hold some hearings open to the public regarding this matter. You know, I kind of look at this, being a federal guy for 30 years, if they can hold hearings. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm just trying to send a message to Congress. If you can hold hearings on underflated footballs, yes. why can't you hold one on this? Can't believe it. So, so, and look at our evidence. Look at it. Just look at it. This is tough for me to, to say, believe me, all you media know me. Sometimes I get diarrhea of the mouth. But I'm telling you right now, we're not going to uh, answer any questions. There's more sensitive information that we have regarding this matter, and I'm not going into it. So I want to thank all the media from coming here. I hope we enlighten you of what the real story and evidence is all about regarding this fake, fake birth certificate. Thank you.